All right, greetings and salutations. Welcome to Tanisha's Reading Corner Podcast. I am your host, Tanisha. Tanisha's Reading Podcast is dedicated to anyone who desires to make reading a daily habit as a form of self-care. To stay updated when a new podcast is uploaded, please subscribe to the channel. In addition, you can find me on Instagram at Tanisha's Reading Corner for many book recommendations and tips and tricks on how to keep reading a daily habit. Let's dive into today's episode. Hello, podcasters of Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you get your podcasting. Yes, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. <clears throat> wow, that was high pitch. Okay, so here we are again. Yes, back with another episode of Tanisha's Reading Corner Podcast. So, today's episode is... Well, before we begin with today's episode, I just wanted to apologize for ghosting you guys for a little bit. Life gets super busy and, you know, trying to keep up with work and family and podcasting, it can get a lot. So what I'm doing now is that I'm doing a new thing with the podcast. So every Monday, I'm going to post, post, excuse me, a book challenge for the week. So every Monday, it'll be a quick mini episode, five, seven minutes at maximum, we'll see. And so I'll do that every Monday, then every Wednesday, we'll have our longer podcast episodes where we'll talk about all things related to books and also book reviews. And there we go. So, um, yeah, let us begin to today's episode. So today's episode is all about audiobooks and should audiobooks be considered reading? Now I posed this question on my Instagram page at Tanisha's Reading Corner and a poll of what do you think? Can audiobooks be considered reading? And the poll came back 60% said yes it can and a good 40% said no it is not. But I've also seen other polls as well where people are like yes no it's very a debatable topic in the reading world if you will. But I will say, though, that I've always been an avid, you know, in the beginning of my reading journey, I was always, you know, the best way to read is just a book. Give me a book, turn a page, let's read. But honestly, I've been really getting into audiobooks. It's, you know, it doesn't take away from the reading experience. It just really, it adds to it. I mean, if you have the book with you and you're reading along as the audiobook is playing, it, I mean, it, gives you a different type of experience if you mean it's something interesting that when the author is reading it in the way that they intend for the words to hit the page and here on the channel we love a good statistic so according to the 2022 press release from the audio publishers association or apa a rise in audiobooks have continued uh, as much as $1.2 billion were spent in 2019 on audiobooks. So it's a growing market. And whether you're sold or still need convincing to jump on the listening bandwagon, here's what experts are saying about mental, physical, and emotional benefits of audiobooks. Now, ever since... <clears throat> excuse me. So the major issue that a lot of people have with audiobooks is that it's kind of cheating, really. Like, you're not actually turning the pages yourself. You're not actually looking at the words. You're just letting someone else read it to you. But the thing is about cheating. Cheating implies an unfair advantage, as though you're receiving a benefit while skirting some work. Why talk about reading as though it were work? Listening to an audiobook might be considered cheating if the act of decoding were the point. Audiobooks allow you to see... You just seem to have decoded without doing so. But if appreciating the language and the story is the point, it's not. Comparing audiobooks to cheating is like meeting a friend at Disneyland and saying, you took a bus here, I drove myself, you big cheater. The point is getting to and enjoying the destination. The point is not how you traveled. So for all you audiobook haters out there, no offense, but... I mean, it's reading. I mean, guess let's be clear. Audiobooking is reading. Write me in the comments if you like. Or go or go to the website or Instagram if you feel you need. But here are some top benefits of audiobooks. 
Yes, audiobooks captivate and inspire us, but they can also help us relax. It seems that many readers are listening to audiobooks to help them fall asleep at night. Oop, that seems to be a recurring theme here on the channel, books that help you fall asleep. So, a psychology today wrote that listening to audiobooks reminds us of the comfort we felt when a parent is reading to a child, essentially. Audiobooks are also a good choice if you want to avoid the adverse effects of staring at a blue screen or staring at a page prior to going to bed. Audiobooks can make us happy and healthy in other ways, too. The convenience, it turns out, also helps improve our moods, outlooks on life, the chance to multitask, also makes us more productive and in control of our lives. Also, combined love of books will tasks we dread, long commutes, chores, cleaning, gardening, etc., etc., can help boost our positivity. In fact, a good book might even motivate us to get on the trail more often or go on the bike for a few extra minutes. So, exercise your brain and your body while, well, same time. The health benefits of audiobooks are especially promising for seniors. Uh, from what studies have shown, listening to audiobooks can help improve symptoms of depression, anxiety, obsessive compulsiveness, and more in older adults. Even better, they won't be, have to hold up a book or wear out their eyes. Now, this was an interesting part of audiobooks as well. It can help improve the quality time with friends and family. Hear me out. Listening to audiobooks can bring us closer to our kids, our parents, spouses, friends, etc. It's true that the most book lovers relish the solidarity of escaping into reading, into the world and everything. But sometimes that passion just begs to be shared. And enjoying audiobooks as a group offers double reward. Quality time while you're listening to your favorite book. Now, as the APA points out, a springboard for conversations about titles after the story ends. So gather up your loved ones, get comfortable, and listen to a good story. Around a campfire, maybe. Alright, and you know what? That's a good place to stop for right now. We're going to do a quick little promo ad, and we'll be right back, so stay tuned. Ladies of the podcast, did you know that your period is not supposed to hurt? Periods are normal, but the pain should not be. Inflammation occurs naturally on your cycle, but painful periods indicate that the inflammation is higher than it should be. That's where some main supplements come in. The main PMS supplements comes packed with nine superpowered plant extracts and minerals. Semaine will not only help to lower your pain levels, but to also support your body naturally from cycle to cycle. For more information, go to their website at semaine, S-E-M-A-I-N-E, health.com. Also, follow them on Instagram at Semaine Health. Also, listeners of the podcast, when you find a supplement that you like to use, your Como code, Tanisha's Reading Corner, to get 20% off your first bottle. Again, the promo code, Tanisha's Reading Corner, to get 20% off your first bottle. Now, let's get back into the episode. As always on the podcast, I like to not only talk about the good, but also the bad. So there are some advantages and also there are some disadvantages of audiobooks. So the top 10 disadvantages, let's start with those of audiobooks. Number one, you'll miss the feeling of actually reading a physical book. Well, when you open a book, hold it, smell the pages, it just puts you in a different feeling, in a different mood, and a different vibe than actually just listening to an audiobook. Which, you know, yeah, for the most part can be true. Also, audiobooks cost more than paperbacks. That is true. Those of us, because the penny does not stretch as it used to, so audiobooks cost more than paperbacks as there are many people involved in the production of an audiobook versus just actually going to the store and buying just a physical copy. Yeah. So, you can't go back and forth. It's a painful experience. That being explained, not being able to go back and forth is the worst kind of an audiobook. Meaning, like, when you read a page and you just read a certain passage that just really feels for you, you can highlight it, you can go back to it, you can bookmark it. Whereas an audiobook, you kind of have to remember the point in the pause, and the. It's hard to go back and review. Of course, you can go back in you know, 15, 30 seconds, but you have to listen to know whether you want to stop at a particular moment or not. So, 
that part of it, yeah, that is a disadvantage. Also, you'll not retain as much information as with you will with a physical book. The more effort any activity acquires, the more benefit you'll get out of it. The same is with your reading. It will help it would help if you had full concentration. Like if you had a physical book and your full concentration is focused on that, you're more likely to remember it. Versus if you're just listening to it, it might go one ear out the other. So you might tend to zone out with audiobooks. So and also, it's easy to get distracted. Since listening to audiobooks is a passive thing, it's easy to get distracted. You can lose your concentration anytime you listen to one. Also, you can fall asleep. While it is relaxing to fall asleep, when you do fall asleep, you might miss out. Wait, where did I go up? Where did I start? Where, what happened? And you'll miss the important mess that the author had for you. The quality of the audiobook also is dependent on the narrator. Narrators can make or break a good book. So the book itself might actually be really good, but if the person narrated is a snooze fest, then yeah, I'm going to skip on you. Also, you may not act in there as a voice at all, and then your whole experience is kind of ruined. And then you also get less out of an audiobook. So you can't highlight, like I said, you can't highlight like the highlighter put bookmarkings and whatnot. So... Those are some of the cons, but going back to, a, there are still just so many pros, though, of an audiobook. Case in point, audiobooks can help you to multitask. You'll know how much time it'll take for you to finish an audiobook. So say you're going on a plane and you want to listen to an audiobook that'll last for the entire plane. You can just pick one, and off you go. Also, you can finish more books a year. Do you want to finish more books? I do. I'm still at my 50 goal. Currently, I'm only at an seven so I'm behind so do you want to finish yes then go for audiobooks they can help you out how super simple turn the audiobook speed up to 1.25 or 1.5 times and you'll find it uncomfortable but initially you'll get into the habit of that fast quick reading and you'll catch on and you'll get to the book a lot faster no need for reading gadgets so listening to audiobook is more comfortable than reading a physical hardcover book I mean, I mean, I do love a good feel of a good book, but oftentimes when I'm lying in bed and I have the book up, it's an uncomfortable experience. So you don't need a reading chair or a book stand or a nightlight. All you need is an earphone and or a smartphone. Audiobooks also save you for eye strain. So, for those of us who wear glasses, understand this. Then it would be best if you went for audiobooks. A simple pro of audiobooks is enough for you to choose between audiobooks and a physical. Also, with an audiobook, you can carry around a thousand books with you without straining your back. This is one of the major benefits of audiobooks. You can have any book with you as one. You can have the whole Harry Potter series, the whole Bridgerton series, the whole any Twilight series if you're into that kind of stuff. Yeah with you if you want and you don't need bookshelves to keep buying books and whatnot i'm still trying to figure out what to do with all the books i have but yeah also audiobooks are for good for people who can't read books audiobooks are the biggest opportunities for people who have an impairment disability and can't read books so they can now get a chance to read books so in that spirit it's definitely worth it Audiobooks can also help you out of a reading slump. Now that is a benefit I didn't even know. So oftentimes, you know, because just recently I'm trying to get back onto my habit because I kind of fell off there a little bit. Just having a reading, having an audiobook and listening to it, it reignites and inspires you to want to get back into reading. Have you experienced, yeah. Reading slump is something that can ev- that every avid book reader goes through and is important to end and you can get it by listening to an audiobook. So yeah, pros and cons of audiobooks. Coming from my own personal experience with audiobooks, like I said earlier in this podcast, I wasn't really into it because I, I was just trying to protest against like I love the feel of a physical book but recently I've been getting into autobiographies and with those autobiographies I've been finding that the authors then do the audiobook in their voice as well too and as I said earlier it's something kind of special to read the page read the words on the page and listen to the author speak them 
in the tone and the language that they meant for it to be said. So it just adds to the experience. Me personally, I love a good audiobook and I also love reading. I love an audiobook because I can listen to it in the car on my way to work. Because as I've said before, I'm a morning reader. So oftentimes I don't want to stop reading. So once I have to get up, get ready for work, I'll pause, I'll turn, I'll put the book down. But then I will remember what page I was on. And then when I get in the car to go to work, I'll put the audiobook on. And that way I can continue to read. And yes, audiobooking is reading. Sorry, to burst your bowl. So, as always, I like to end every podcast with a good quote. And this one is from James Patterson. And he says on audiobooks, I do 30 to 40 books a year. So it's a fair amount of reading back and forth between nonfiction and fiction. I usually have three or four things that are open on my desk, on my bed, on audiobook, in the car. And on that note, I thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Tanisha's Reading Corner Podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming back. And this season, we're going to dive more into some, um, <laughs> into some audiobooks, but also into uh, biographies, autobiographies. This season, also we'll be talking more about tips and tricks, as always, keeping reading a daily habit. So stay tuned on Mondays for the weekly book challenge, and then on Wednesdays for your Deep and Dive podcast episode. So again, thank you. Please, 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 if you love this episode, share with family and friends. Please rate wherever you get your podcast on Spotify, Apple Music, or whatever your podcast. And... Oh, follow at TanishasReadingCorner.com, which is the website, and also on Instagram at TanishasReadingCorner. And wishing you all good wellness and good reading. Have a good day.